Hello, welcome to Full Circle, your favorite political show. I am Arthur Dash, and I'll be the moderator and center of the circle. To my right, we have Philip Shatton, and to my far right, we have Adam Ando. To my left, we have our guest, who shares his name with a president. Yes, very interesting. President who died. Uh, Zachary <laughs> Taylor. And to my far left, we have Devin Sandin. We'll be discussing three issues today. The first will be our will be will be presented by our, by our guest Zachary Taylor. Yes, once again the president, which will be the current situation happening in like Yemen, Syria, and all the crises that are going on there. Then I will present the gridlock, which will be the Federal Reserve. We'll be arguing whether we should keep the Fed or end the Fed. And finally, we will finish with our hot topic, which will be brought up by Devin Sandin, which will be campaign finance reform. So on that note, uh, let us start with the uh, first issue, which will be brought up by our guest here, Zach, which is the current situation is going on in Syria and Yemen. All right. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. The uh, U.S. is at a, an interesting strategic crossroads here because it's not purely a strategic matter. It's an ideological one. The Arab Spring has shown us that the ideologies in play, right, democracy, um, the inherent goodness of certain political structures over others that was dismissed as neoconservative rhetoric less than a decade ago has now actually been put to play in the Middle East. And a lot of our past actions are coming to bite us. Um, so now that we've seen, for example, how our support from Mubarak has led to an anti-U.S. reaction in what should be an, embrace, you know, an embracing of our values, um, it's time to reconsider our alliances with dictatorships across the Middle East, most notably Syria, our alliance with Bashar Assad. Um, Ten years ago, he came to power uh, from his father, who was an infamous repressive dictator, and the United States thought he was a reformer. We thought wrong. He, we tried to get him to negotiate with Israel. It didn't work. He wasn't serious about giving up the Golan for peace. He started a nuclear program. Israel had to bomb them. Dick Cheney recently revealed he wanted the United States to bomb Syria but uh, the Bush administration did not go along with that. And I think what we've seen is we've put too much faith in this idea that democracy is impossible in the Middle East and we need to keep the strong man on our side. So are you pretty much saying you are against like US intervention in those countries or are you pro for them? So you're saying we shouldn't be aligned with all these dictators, we should sort of let potentially democracy evolve and emerge there on its own? I think there's a risk that we say, oh, we've screwed up in the past, we need to completely withdraw from the region. Because mm -hmm. obviously, stability is important. Democracy cannot be built overnight. Um, and there are core U.S. interests and humanitarian interests that are at stake. So we need to take an active role in supporting the uh, rebellion, especially in Syria. Um, Ambassador Ford has been doing that, going around, essentially provoking the Syrians into trying to harm him putting his own life at risk for the sake of uh, public relations, which will probably give us a much um, better starting point with the next Syrian regime. Um, but on the other hand, even as we reconsider this, there are cases where we cannot simply, you know, throw our allies under the bus. Take Yemen, for example. Saleh is by no means a saint. Um, he's on the verge of being overthrown. We've already said we want him out of office, but we can't expect a liberal democracy to pop up there overnight. So we're going to have to strike a balance between containing local forces, containing Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, um, stopping extremists from coming to power, but not blatantly violating our own principles. So we need to be involved, but be less hypocritical about it. Now, what do you think future implications are of this are going to be? Because, for example, before, like in Iran, I think it was the 1970s, maybe it was the very early 1980s, for example, when we put the Shah there. We, we sort of... 63, I believe. Oh, 63, yeah. my mistake. We sort of ended up facing implications of that. Like, they ended up backfiring. At one point, we, we supported other leaders in other countries, like Saddam Hussein, that ended up backfiring. Like, do you think there's going to be, like, future consequences if we do this, as you say? Um... Yeah, I think we are seeing the consequences now, certainly uh, with Mubarak. Um, so, then, seen... so then why should we keep me um, sort of meddling with these countries if there's such a high risk of such future catastrophes? Because I don't think that the U.S. being involved necessarily equates to us being involved in a negative way. If you take 
I mean, take the what would seem like the worst example, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, right? You'd think that the Palestinians of all people would have a horrible opinion of us. And yet, polls show that the majority of both Palestinians and Israelis have more faith in the U.S. government helping resolve the conflict than either of their own governments. Um, so the U.S. is respected for its power. It's respected for its soft power resources, its culture, its leadership, its democratic values, even by people who disagree with specific U.S. policies. What do you guys think? Well, I agree with your analysis of Yemen, that we do have to strike a balance, and that it's too sensitive an area just to completely throw um, the uh, current leader just under the bus. Um, but I think when you look at Egypt, and increasingly Syria now, I think you may be over, I'm sorry, I think you may be overestimating the democratic feelings of the rebellion. Like we're seeing now with, uh, in Egypt, there have been increasing uh, protests against uh, the generals who took over. It's, it's not looking like they're going to be a democracy anytime soon. And honestly, in Syria, I wouldn't be surprised even if Assad was overthrown tomorrow. I and honestly believe it, we'd see one dictator overthrown just to be replaced by another dictator, and quite honestly, I believe a generally anti-American dictator. So I think we do need to intervene, and I'm sorry, but you know there are times where we, we may have to act somewhat hypocritical in regards to our ideology, because that is geopolitics. The alternative, I believe, is far worse. Well, I think Egypt is an interesting example, um, because in some ways it disproves the idea that we need to keep supporting these dictators. Um, the Muslim Brotherhood, for example, which is, you know, for some legitimate, some exaggerated reasons, the boogeyman in Egypt was left behind by the protests in Tahrir Square. They didn't even get out there in force, you know, and start distributing their pamphlets um, until weeks after the protests started. And sure, the military took over. That was the only plausible transition, right? You have to have the mili you have to have somebody govern before elections could be set up. Um, and I think there are segments of the Egyptian populace that probably don't understand that, you know, just as you have Americans who don't understand the nuances of the government. I'd argue the Occupy Wall Street protests are an example of the same phenomenon where people are raging at something without appreciating the nuances of it. So obviously you have Egyptians who want democracy now, and that's why they're angry at the military government. And I think they need to be more patient, but I don't think that shows that um, they're anti-democratic or anti-U.S. Uh, with regard to Dashim's comments about our interference having generally negative effects, I would say that the reason that is is because we always tend to support autocrats because they support stability, at least in the short term. In the long term, though, they hold that stability by repressive means, and because of that, they get the population angry. So since we're supporting these autocrats, when they finally do fall, we eat the backlash. If we support a democratic movement in these states, it might not be as stable for us and support our interests all the time as much, but we would never face that backlash to nearly the same degree. Yeah, but now you're generalizing in, you know, our exploits in the Middle East. But if we just look at Syria and Yemen, you look at Hafez Assad, Bashar's father, and he's, yeah. like, against the Muslim Brotherhood. He's not, you know, Tehran isn't in Damascus with him discussing things. He's not building nuclear reactors in our way. He's, like, on our side, technically. He's working with us against a common enemy. So we let him just, you know, bomb the hell out of Hamas. And it worked, and we were okay with that. But now... His son is not with us at all. He's not helping us. He's talking with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. They want to become stronger. Same with Yemen. Saleh is like been weaned off of the you know U.S.'s milk, if you will. And mm. now they're both bad allies because they're not doing what we need. Technically, like it's pretty blatant, but it's true. And so in Yemen right now, we're supporting different rebel groups. Well, they're like, why would you do that? Why are you supporting somebody and the other rebel groups? Well, it's called bait and bleed. You give them guns, you let them kill the other one off. Now you weaken all of them, and then you put, you know, the best, most viable new autocrat in charge. So it's just a, you know, vicious cycle, but we right. need new people to replace the old ones. And I think there are strategies where we can sometimes get the advantages of the autocrats without, you know, just blatantly violating our own values. Yemen, for example, Saudi Arabia has a, has a vested interest in stability there. If things get too bad, they will intervene militarily, whether we want them to or not. Um, so I think that we can take that into account. Since Saudi Arabia is going to invade anyway, we can, if things get too bad, if the government's completely overthrown, um, we can keep that in mind. And sure, there 
military is probably not going to respect human rights the same way we would want to. Okay. But it could be the lesser of two evils. We need to wrap the segment up because we're almost out of time. So if you guys want to go in the circle saying what you all feel about the situation, go ahead. Have you said everything you want to say? Um, mm -hmm. Pretty much, yeah. Just to summarize, I think my thesis is that we need to open a new page in our Middle East relations. We need to accept the hypocrisies of the past and move beyond that. But I don't think that that is a blank check for isolationism and for non-involvement. We need smarter involvement, not less involvement. Yep, blank checks suck. Devin, what do you I have to say? I agree with Zach. Uh, we need to change our Middle Eastern policy, but we shouldn't embrace isolationism. We should try to avoid the hypocrisy of the past to the degree that we can, but not completely ignore pragmatism while doing it. So Devin also does not like blank checks. Adam? <laughs> um, I believe that Assad and Saleh have just not worked out for us and we need to replace them just like we replaced Saddam and I don't see any problem with just replacing them with new autocrats. We should pretty much shoot first and democratize later. So do you say we should replace them? Like we should try and involve ourselves to replace them or you think they should find their own new ruler or like um, a ruler should rise no, up? No, we should definitely pick out which ruler they need because they need to follow our interests. Okay, and? Uh, for the most part I agree with Zach and Devin. Probably just the biggest difference is I think you kind of overestimate the Middle East um, preferences for democracy and their ability to kind of forgive the U.S. But other than that, I do generally agree with you that recent events have shown that we can't continue Middle East policy as we have over the last 30, 40 years. There does need to be some change. And I'm the libertarian who disagrees with everyone. Uh, I personally think we should just stay out of their business. If anything, I completely disagree with Adam. I don't think we should put our own guy in. Every time we've done that, we just messed the whole situation up. I say let them give rise to their own ruler. And now, that is the, egg, uh, the end of the first segment.